Man and monster kind live in this world. They treat each other with suspicion, aggression, spite, and one abusing the other is not uncommon. But alas, the world they share is single. Occupying the same lands with neither of the races being able to leave, the end of the conflict seems to be only possible if one of them perishes at the hands of the other. While this view is common, you're skeptical. Is it truly impossible to live together? So many animals already do so. Many hunt each other to survive, but many also work together and help one another. And most simply exist next to one another, neither helping nor hurting. What makes man and monster so different? The lands can sustain both, so can't they live like other animals? If not friends, then at least not as enemies? Seeking answers, you start studying those you don't understand. Observing them, taking notes, categorizing what you've learned. You write down your research in hopes of understanding the monsters and seeing if coexistence truly is merely a dream. The findings might also be helpful for others to learn and expand on what you've already gathered. But regardless, you feel you must learn, you must write down, you must observe, and you must at least try to understand. Having studied them for a long time, you see that while there are numerous differences, there seems to be nothing preventing coexistence. And yet, that does not happen. When looking at who starts conflicts or where tensions rise, you notice that what people are talking about differs a lot from your research. They say things you've never observed in the monsters. They speak with conviction about traits you've never heard about. Was your research wrong? Is what you've written pointless? Going back to observe the monsters, you notice something eerily similar. The monsters talking about humans in ways that you know are incorrect. Them mentioning evils you've never seen in man. Observing people of both races, you also notice they only talk about the evils of the other with the members of their own kind. The only contact between them is aggression. You come to the conclusion that all of it stems from self-perpetuating ignorance. If only monsters and humans were to actually talk with each other, there'd be some common ground. There'd be the possibility of understanding why others act the way they do. But now it's all filled with lies. All interactions only caused by one side attacking the other, coming closer only to cause grief. At first, you only wanted to learn. You wanted to investigate if coexistence truly is hopeless. But the more you thought about it, the more fixated you've become on the idea. The more you thought about it, the more you started to despise the world you were seeing. It became your obsession. Fueled by your hatred towards the irrational world you've been born to, you decided to take matters into your own hands. Fueled by the hope, the mere possibility of coexistence being achievable, you decide to unite the races or die trying. We can live together, is the hill you will die on. And so, you embark on your mission to see your dream fulfilled. You will preach to anyone willing to listen. You will make yourself heard by those who wish you never spoke anything. You will hunt those that feed lies about others. You will destroy those that seek to profit from the existing prejudice. You will be the most heroic, the most annoying, the most righteous and the most insufferable man walking under the sun. You will make your message heard, far and wide, loud and clear. You will do anything for your dream, dedicate your entire life for that cause and won't stop until it's achieved or life leaves your body. It's over. You won. Your dream really was possible. And thanks to your actions, you've achieved it. It doesn't mean some eternal peace, but the grievances of old and the violence caused by them have been curbed. You paved the way for a new world. And now, you can live that world. After a mission like no other, you now want to rest. Settle down and enjoy the everyday mundanity of life. Experience the simple joys and simple sorrows. Welcome 
My name is Quasokto, and I'm the host of this channel. As a connoisseur and scholar of the Monster Guild genre, I took it upon myself to categorize and describe its essence and history in as much detail as possible. In this video, I shall introduce you to what I consider to be the holy trinity of the Monster Guild genre, the three founding mothers. But I won't be doing this alone. Come on out! Okay, let's try this again. But I won't be doing this alone. Come on out! The first founding mother, Monster Girl Encyclopedia. Essentially an art book with Monster Girl pinups, but presented in the form of an animal encyclopedia. Written and illustrated by Kenko Cross. The first out of two volumes was released on 31st of December 2010 in Japan and later translated and published in English on 25th of October 2016. It starts with a letter from a researcher who introduces the book to you, setting the tone of it and introducing the lore of the world. After that we have a brief introduction to what monsters are, their nature, diet, reproduction, attacks on humans, values, relations with human men, all of which serves as more world-building and background lore. And gotta say, the lore is pretty neat and detailed. How and why current monsters came to be, their values, how mana works in this world, and some bits about their culture and how they view the world. For example, the words husband, slave and prey are all synonymous for monsters, but they are still completely loyal to their chosen men, they value them immensely and would never hurt them or any other human unless in self-defense or defense of their man. That is a pretty interesting relationship to think about. And after that, finally we have the book proper, so to speak. On one side a big illustration of a monster, few bullet points about her taxonomy, habitat, nature and diet, and on the other side we have a detailed description of that particular monster. It could be said the Monster Girl Encyclopedia books consist of three parts, monster illustrations, descriptions of those monsters, and descriptions of the world, its history and concepts relevant for understanding how this world works. So obviously the main appeal and value of the books lies in their illustrations and monster designs. And both are hella great! The first book uh, has some less star illustrations, probably from earlier in the making process, but it also has a ton of amazing ones. The second book though... That is pure gold. Almost all the illustrations and designs are executed masterfully and are very unique and creative. First book had more general types of monsters, whereas the second one has some specific themes for some of them, like Japanese yokai, Alice in the Wonderland and Lovecraftian deities. The second founding mother, Monster Girl Quest. A visual novel with some light RPG elements. Made by Torotoro Resistance, first out of three chapters, was released on 10th of March 2011 and later translated into English by Rogue Translator on 24th of September 2011. Some of the art was also done by Kenko Cross, the creator of Monster Girl Encyclopedia. The game tells the story of Luca, a young boy just reaching adulthood who's supposed to become baptized and become a hero. On the day of departure, the only time when a man can become baptized by the goddess of this world Ilias and become a true hero, Luca's village is attacked by a slime monster. Luca fights and drives off the monster, but we learn that he doesn't actually want to hurt monsters, let alone kill them. His dream is to create a world where humans and monsters can live peacefully together, and he wants to become a hero so that he can defeat the monster lord who's supposedly ordering the monsters to do evil to humans. After defeating the slime, while coming back to the village, he thinks about how monsters and humans used to live together in peace, until the slaughter of Remina happened, which soured the relationships between them and led to the situation he sees today. He hopes to fix that. Suddenly, he hears a massive crash nearby. When he goes there, he finds a beautiful woman... Uh, uh, scratch that... a beautiful monster lying unconscious on the ground. He doesn't have much time before the baptism, but decides to help the monster anyway. 
the Lamia gets up, they exchange a few words, then Luca rushes to the Ilias temple to receive his baptism. The priest tells him that Ilias isn't here and she won't celebrate his coming of age or baptize him. His one in a lifetime opportunity to become a true hero is gone. He goes back to his house and is surprised to see the same Lamia he held before in it. She tells him she's just a traveling monster and that she came here because she found Luca to be interesting. After giving the Lamia some food, he tells her he'll go out to defeat the monster lord anyway, regardless of whether or not he's recognized as a true hero. He wants to make the world peaceful for both humans and monsters and get rid of the hatred between the races. The monster girl finds his childish idealism both idiotic and interesting and tells him she'll accompany him on his journey. Luca can sense she's a powerful monster and that he couldn't do anything to stop her from that, so he just allows her to tag along, hoping she won't be too much trouble for him. And thus, the fake hero Luca and traveling gourmet Alice set out on a grand journey across the world. The game is a visual novel with some very light RPG elements, like I already said. The RPG system it uses are incredibly simplistic in how they work, at least from the player's perspective, but they do require the player to pay attention to what's going on screen in order to win the battles. But the most important thing is the story here. What appears to be just a hentai visual novel game turns out to actually be a well-planned big narrative that seriously tackles a lot of different themes and has a lot of depth. The world has its own long history, which influences the attitudes and cultures found in this world, and while playing you discover all that. The game leaves a ton of hints throughout its entirety, which I'll come together to explain the story that takes place here. There's also plot twists like... holy shit! But it's not just plot twists for the sake of plot twists. All the reveals make sense and tie back to the information told in the story earlier. It was all planned and holy shit! This is some grand and amazing story right there. And it's grot grotesque monsters raping a young boy several times a day. Yeah, it might be a hentai fetish game with a focus on a large and deep story, but that doesn't change the fact it's still a hentai fetish game. Some of the stuff here can really be mind scarring to some people. Alright, uh, buckle up fella, I'm gonna show ya what I think is a mm, few of the worst examples of that. Oh no god! No, God, please, no, 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 no! If you can handle this, I think you can handle all of Monster Girl Quest, no problem. If you can't handle these, well, they are the most extreme examples in the game, so you might still be fine. Most of the monsters look like these. If you're fine with those, go right ahead, download the game, apply the English patch if you don't know the moon runes, and play it. The story is so worth it. For everyone else, I don't know, you can try watching a let's play, there's one on YouTube, or wait for someone to do some highlights or something, I'm thinking of showing a couple examples of quality writing from this game on my channel. But there's no space for them in this video, so that will have to wait. The third founding mother, Monster Musume no Iru Nichijo. Monster Musume no Iru Nichijo, or in non-moon words, Everyday Life with Monster Girls. First chapter was published on 19th of March 2012, drawn by Okayado. Before this chapter, Okayado also made several single-page comics about the very same idea, which served as the prototypes for scenarios and characters later found in Monster Musume proper. The earliest example of such comic I could find dates back to 14th of April 2008, whereas the earliest Monster Girl illustration from Okayada I could find is from 6th of March 2007, though those are uploads to E621 image board, so the true dates of those comics and illustrations is unknown to me. It's safe to say Okayada was interested in the idea of Monster Girls since at least 2007. Monster Musume tells the story of a young man named Kirihito, who happens to be the host for Alamia in the Interspecies Exchange Program. After the existence of monsters became known to public, the exchange program was put into action to introduce both humans and monsters to each other in hopes of establishing friendly and positive relations between them. The manga focuses on sexy AF monster women, how their anatomy and biology affects everyday life, and racism. Uh, speciesism. Speciesism. 
subspecies. Varietism. Eh, fuck it. Discrimination and prejudice based on biological differences and group belonging. Jokes aside, the discrimination is in the manga, but it's just there to add a little depth to the world and make the exchange program more believable, which it definitely succeeds at. Most of the time in the manga is spent on comedy, biology and fan service. Hell of a lot of TNA in this one. And it's non-human TNA too. Perfect conversation starter at a family table. Monster Musume is by far the most popular of the Holy Trinity and the one most of you probably think about when hearing the term Monster Girl genre. However, it is merely one of the three founders of the genre. Four founders, if you count a centaur's life, which started publishing in the same magazine as Monster Musume, but over a year earlier, on 1st of February 2011. The reason I don't focus on centaur's life here is because I think it didn't have nearly the impact on establishing the genre as the other three. That doesn't mean it's irrelevant, just not on the same level. And I think that'll do for now. This video is meant as an introduction to those three works, and I think that has been achieved. However, when it comes to what I plan on making, this video is merely the beginning of many to come, all about various facets of the Monster Girl genre. So, if that's something you're interested in, then you know where to look for. And on that note, I bid you farewell.